I want to share with you how much my 10 kilowatt solar system produced over the winter. In this solar production overview, I'm going to cover the following things, including some of the lowest production days and how little energy was actually produced on those days. And we'll also cover the highest production day for each month and on what day it happened on. I'll cover the total amount of production for each month and the total amount of consumption for each month. And finally, I'll provide the winter totals and averages over the four months. Although our winter wasn't brutally cold or extremely snowy, we did experience a lot of cloudy days. A matter of fact, there are days in November, December, January, and February where we produced three kilowatts or less for the entire day. And that's extremely low considering the size of our solar array. Let's get started because there's a lot of data you might find useful. First, let me address the elephant in the room. When I refer to a 10 kilowatt solar system, I'm referring to the max rating of brand new panels under perfect conditions. However, that's probably something we'll never achieve in real world conditions. If you're curious on how a solar panel is actually rated, I'll leave a link in the description below. Click on that to learn more on STC and PTC ratings. Second, a solar array is limited to the amount of production that the inverter can convert. In my case, we're using microinverters. To make this short, my 10 kilowatt solar system is actually limited to just at eight kilowatts, 7,965 watts to be exact. If you're new to my channel, I have other videos on solar where I talk about what components are needed, how to wire, and even build your own solar system. If you're into this type of thing, you may wanna consider subscribing to the channel and tapping that notification bell. So when I put out new videos like this one, you get notified. Let's take a closer look on how much electricity I produce for the months of November, December, January, and February. So I'm gonna start back in November and work our way forward to February. In November, our solar production started to drop off and December was probably the coldest month that we had during this period. There were days that we actually experienced 26 below zero. Needless to say, we had our heater kicking constantly and that electric furnace consumed a lot of electricity. And nothing really changed in January. We had clouds, clouds, and more clouds. February was oddly probably the warmest February that I could ever remember. But nothing to really celebrate over, just better than what I thought it would actually be. So let's review some actual numbers of the lowest production days in each of these months. And November was the first month that we actually consumed more than we produced. We consumed 1,700 kilowatts and only produced 902.1 kilowatt hours. We didn't even come close of breaking even and that happened suddenly because we actually overproduced in October. In November, there were actually five days where we produced less than 8.7 kilowatt hours for the entire day. That never happens in late spring, summer, or early fall. So let's visit the Enphase Enlightened app on November the 5th, we produced 8.5 kilowatt hours. On November the 12th, we produced 3.1 kilowatt hours. Moving on to November the 15th, we produced only 2.8 kilowatt hours. November the 27th, we produced 8.7 kilowatt hours. On November the 28th, we produced 7.9 kilowatt hours. And the best production day that we actually seen in November was on November the 19th, where we produced 48.6 kilowatt hours. And things actually got worse in December. We had a lot more overcast days. 13 of the 31 days, the system produced less than nine kilowatt hours for the entire day, producing a total of 638.9 kilowatt hours. Of the 2,700, yes, I said 2,700 kilowatt hours that we consumed. And the week between December 5 and December 11, that seven day stretch was the lowest producing seven days in a row that we experienced in this entire winter. We produced only 37 kilowatts for a seven day stretch. That period of time for seven days doesn't even match the best producing one day that we had in December which was on December the 25th, where we produced 46.5 kilowatt hours in a single day. So let's take a quick look at all of those days in December where we actually produced below nine kilowatt hours. December 5th, 3.4 kilowatts. 
December 6th, 5.7 kilowatts. December 7th, 8.2 kilowatts. December 8th, 2.9 kilowatts. December 9, 5.3 kilowatts. December 10, 5.4 kilowatts. December 11, 6.1 kilowatts. And December the 14th was terrible, 2.5 kilowatts. December the 22nd, 4.3 kilowatts. December 26th, 7.5 kilowatts. December 27th, 9.2 kilowatts. December 29th, 7.3 kilowatts. And December the 31st, 7.6 kilowatts. And January was absolutely the worst month out of the four months that we have here recorded for winter where we produced less than eight kilowatts per day for 15 of the 31 days in January. And in the summer, we can produce nearly eight kilowatts in one hour. January was just a horrible month for solar production, producing only 624.5 kilowatts of the 2,600 kilowatts that we actually consumed. And our overall worst day fell on January the 26th, where we only produced 2.3 kilowatts for the entire day. So let's take a look at these low producing days. January 1st, eight kilowatts. January 2nd, 5.6 kilowatts. January 3rd, 4.2 kilowatts. January 8th, 5.5 kilowatts. January 12th, 4.7 kilowatts. January 13th, 5.4 kilowatts. January the 16th, 4.7 kilowatts. January the 20th, 6.2 kilowatts. January 22nd, 5.7 kilowatts. January the 25th, 6.3 kilowatts. And our worst day, as I mentioned before, was January the 26th, where we produced only 2.3 kilowatts. January the 29th, we produced 3.8 kilowatts. January the 30th, 5.4 kilowatts. And the 30th, 5.4 kilowatts. Our best production day that we had in January was on January the 27th, where we produced 43.6 kilowatt hours. We started to see a slight uptick in February on the production and a downturn on the consumption, producing 903 kilowatts and consuming 2,100 kilowatts, having only four days where we produced less than eight kilowatt hours per day. Those fell on February the 8th, producing 7.5 kilowatts, February the 16th, producing 2.8 kilowatts. February the 17th, 7.0 kilowatts. The best producing day that we actually had in February fell on February the 15th, where we produced 55.9 kilowatt hours. Now I wanna talk about the average consumption and production for each month of November, December, January, and February. In November, we consumed on average 30 kilowatts per day versus the 56.6 that we consumed each day. December, we produced on average 20.6 kilowatts per day and consumed 83.87 kilowatts each day. In January, we produced 20.8 kilowatts on average per day. And boy, did we consume it because we consumed 86.66 kilowatts per day. In February, on average, we produced 32 Point twenty six kilowatt hours and consumed 75 kilowatts per day. Now we're going to talk about the overall totals and averages for the winter. We produced 3,068.9 kilowatts total and averaged 25.79 kilowatts per day produced. And we consumed 9,100 kilowatts over the entire period, which averages out to 76.47 kilowatts per day. Hopefully I was able to provide a little bit more insight on how a solar system might produce over a winter. It's actually not that great in my location, but now that we're entering spring, summer, and fall, we'll start to massively overproduce and build our net metering bank so we can offset our electricity 100% next winter. And if you're unfamiliar with what net metering is, I have a video on that. Go check that out. I have a link up here or in the description below. I think it's very possible even though we're running our entire house and the shop 100% off electricity, achieve net zero. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it in some way, do me a huge favor and let me know by smashing that thumbs up button. I wanna thank everyone that supports my channel 
by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. It means a lot and I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions or you would like to request a video covering something you'd like to learn more about, leave me a comment below. I hope to see you in my next one.